Hey everyone, yet another episode of Podward State coming your way. I'm Matt Palez. My name is Sam Brungo. Joined on this little short episode, we're just doing a little basketball segment. We're chatting with our associate editor, William Hutchinson Pegler III, also known to us as Pegs. So, you know, Pegs coming on, we just had a big, uh, big switch up at basketball. It's kind of been a crazy week here uh, for Penn State Hoops. You know, we hired a new head coach and a lot of players entered the transfer portal and yeah kind of crazy we'll just unpack that with will yeah so that definitely creates a time Penn State basketball but i feel like what uh what will had to say was definitely very comforting at least to me you know what he made sense you know it's not the end of the world you know uh things could still definitely get better um uh which is which is great to hear especially you know at first i know i was kind of worried and panicked when i saw all that news but you know some of it was some of it was expected um, in terms of the transfers, but, um, you know, some of it was still kind of surprising, at least maybe the, the number of uh, players who were transferring. But still, you know, what Will said, I think, was very comforting. And for anybody listening who is nervous about the state of Penn State basketball, uh, you should give it a listen. Yeah, let's jump into it. Now we are joined by, once again, associate editor Will Pegler, Coach Pegs, joining us to talk some some Penn State hoops. They're in some dire straits right now, but Pegs, how you doing? What's up, guys? Thanks very much for having me. Just uh, watching some March Madness, watching a little college wrestling. Uh, doing well. How about you guys? Doing fantastic. We just watched Oral Roberts. Oral. Ohio State. We love Oral. Big um, big Oral supporters on Podward State. If, if any Oral Roberts uh, players or associates want to come on the pod, you guys are more than welcome. All joking aside, um, Penn State this week made a pretty big hire, hiring um, Micah Shrewsbury, uh, an associate from Purdue, uh, as their new head coach to replace Jim Ferry, uh, who was replacing Patrick Chambers. So, uh, Pegs, tell us a little bit about that move. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, Penn State, Sunday night, we're watching the uh, NIT selection show. Penn State doesn't get in, and that really, you know, marks the end of their season it was a weird season obviously but um i've read a little bit about it i i in jim ferry's defense i i don't think it was a bad season by any means i mean they i mean they go 11 and 14 hang around with a lot of good teams and make a pretty not a very deep run in the big 10 tournament but they turn some heads um but so anyway clearly um it wasn't enough to keep ferry around the next day uh the report comes out that shrewsbury is going to be hired and then it becomes official on monday night um and yeah we've we've talked a little bit about it but he's got a ton of experience um he's had one head coaching job in the past but he's most known for being kind of like brad stevens guy who's now with the boston celtics so he spent a lot of time with brad stevens at butler um and eventually reconnected with him with the celtics he's he's coached guys like uh, kyrie irving jalen brown um jason tatum some nba stars um then most recently like you said he was at purdue so no shortage of experience and um, a lot of Penn State fans are really excited about the hire. They think it's going to be, he's got a tall task in front of him, just in terms of what's going on right now with the program. Um, but a lot of people are confident that, you know, he's a young guy who can connect with a lot of the players and, and get it done down the road. Yeah, in terms of Shrewsbury, obviously, um, a little early to tell. I mean, he still needs to get through his, uh, his team's March Madness run. He's uh, currently with Purdue. Um, of course, by recording this, that run could easily be over by the time we post it because that's just March, you know, but uh, as of recording it, he's still in the thick of things. What, what do you think really Shrewsbury can, can bring to, to Penn State? Like what sort of changes could he make and what could we possibly see on the court? Well, you know, I think the first thing in the, you know, immediate future is helping um, kind of recruit guys back to Penn State, not even worry about high school guys as of now. Um, a ton of dudes are in the transfer portal starting with, or have been reported to be in the transfer portal. Sorry. A lot of them haven't made it official themselves. Um, but, you know, Jamari Wheeler, John Hara, Isaiah Brockington, that's just a few of the guys. Seth Lundy, too. Um, so really task number one for him is going to be convince guys to stay with his program, um, convince them that he can build something special right away. Um, so that's really going to be the first thing in the in the immediate future. And then also along with that, um, building a class of 2021. After um, the fiasco went down with Pat Chambers, Penn State lost everybody in the class of 2021. Right now they only have one guy. And the recruiting class who uh, he committed back in. But so recruiting is going to be the biggest thing. He, he needs guys to play for him. And right now um, it's kind of up in the air. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, like you mentioned, um, you know, Hare, Wheeler, Brockington, Buttrick, 
Jones and Lundy and uh, to be expected, potentially a couple more in there. But you wrote a post this week chatting a little bit about how just because seven players entered the transfer portal the morning after the hire doesn't mean that the, uh, you know, it's up in flames that they're just checking out their, um, you know, their options just to see what the plan is. Many of them said that from the point that um, Pat Chambers was uh, ousted from the program that they were planning on doing that at the end of the season anyway. So can you talk a little bit about that and just about that post and the, the you know, calm down, tap the brakes, everybody? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think everybody, when those reports started to come out Tuesday morning, I think everybody was quick to be like, oh, the program's dead. Like this is over all the, you know, work that Pat Chambers put in is gone and, you know, worthless or whatever, which really isn't true. I mean, the transfer portal has kind of made like transferring, quote unquote, a really like reactionary thing. Transfer portal is literally just free agency. So um, guys can join it and literally just be openly recruited by other coaches and other programs without any rules being broken or anything. Um, But you can also leave it and come right back to your program. It's really like a way for a lot of guys to like test the waters and see what kind of offers they could get hypothetically. So like one example that always comes to mind is Lamont Wade, uh, Penn State football safety. He finished his career last year, but after the... 2018 season he entered the transfer portal after he wasn't playing much at safety and like people were like giving him shit and like it was bad like for like two weeks he got shit on and then he he returned from the transfer portal so that could easily happen for a lot of these guys he returned from the transfer portal and had a really strong career over the next two years so a lot of these guys hypothetically could just be testing the waters and if they don't like the offers they get they can come right back to penn state um i'd find it really hard to believe if you know there's six guys in the portal right now potentially more Say if we end up with seven or eight guys in the portal, I'd find it really hard to believe that every single one is going to leave um, just because that wouldn't really make sense. If, if one guy transfers, that means another spot opens up for you. So I don't think it's fair to say, oh, Penn State just lost, you know, all six of these stars. That probably really isn't isn't how it's going to play out. But we'll, we'll see, obviously. Can you talk a little bit to, you know, uh, what type of attention those players might get? You know, obviously, uh John Hare being one of the big names, Myron Jones, and uh, which ones we can expect to be here and which ones, you know, we expect to be gone. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of rumors and reports surrounding these guys, so nothing official yet. Um, But I know Hare, uh, by uh, 24-7 Sports, has had a ton of reports about the um, looks he's gotten. He's he's a pretty popular option right now in the portal, I think, according to, to them. I'm not surprised. I mean, he was awesome this year as a big man. And I know even in the in just the Big Ten, um, he garnered a ton of attention just with what he did. Really considering the expectations were not that high for Penn State this year, he was really the only um, experienced guy inside. And other than that, Penn State had no size. So he had to carry the load. He had like five double-doubles, averaged nine points and nine rebounds per game. I mean, a really solid year, really gritty year, as I like to say. So he, he I think he's a guy that will stand out in the portal – um, and then Myron Jones, too. I mean, he was he was a top scorer all year. He was a standout. Um, a guy from Mobile, Alabama. So who knows? Possibly he heads down south to a school closer to him. Um, I know that's a possibility. But this is all this is all speculation. I don't, I don't want to say anything's official yet. But um, those are two guys that come to mind for me when I think about who could be getting the most looks um, in the portal right now. So it's not the end of the world, at least, at least not yet. Exactly. Not, um, not the end of the world at all. I mean – Obviously, like what I said about the transfer portal and how that works, I think people tend to like forget that the transfer portal doesn't mean you're leaving. Guys enter it all the time and then just come back. That's just kind of the nature of how it is now, whether you like it or not. And then another thing, we've talked about it already. Micah Shrewsbury isn't like an idiot. Like, I mean, he's clearly got really good experience um, alongside Brad Stevens, alongside Matt Painter, who's been in the Big Ten for a while. Purdue's obviously, you guys have seen what they do as a program. They're a number, I'm looking at my bracket right now, they're number four seed um in the tournament so they're obviously a talented team um so yeah i would if i were a penn state fan um which i am <laughs> i'd be i'd be really excited about michael shrewsbury i mean he he's a young guy i think he's excited to build something obviously he wanted to come to penn state i mean he signed here he, he's bringing his family to state college um so it seems to me like his heart's in the right place and i'm excited to see what kind of assistance he'll sign over these next few months what kind of staff he'll bring in um yeah, a lot of obviously a lot of moving parts, but I don't think it's all bad um, or it's going to be all bad these next few months. I think there will be some exciting developments. Yeah, you mentioned um, our coach, our new coach, Micah Shrewsbury, but let's chat a little bit about our old coaches. You know, um, Patrick Chambers obviously was here for close to 10 years. Um, you know, he 
he started out a little rough, but came uh, came to fruition his his climb towards the end of his time here. And um, you know, obviously that didn't necessarily end up the way uh, anybody wanted it to um, after that uh, tournament berth. And then you know, COVID came, and then he was gone. But um, you know, Jim Ferry, you also mentioned, uh, deserves a lot of credit. So what do we think we'll see from those guys? Will we see them get another job? Maybe. Um, at a bigger school or anything? Yeah, I mean, I think starting with Ferry, I think, in my opinion, he deserves a look um, as a head coach somewhere else. I mean, he, I think he totally proved himself this year, obviously, as a basketball mind. He, he did a solid job. I mean, Penn State, the Virginia Tech win is one that comes to mind. Uh, they beat Wisconsin. They hung with Ohio State. And I know hanging with, with teams isn't the same thing as winning, obviously. You want to win all your games, but I think he really proved himself this year as a solid coach. And a lot of those games down the stretch just didn't go Penn State's way. Um, so I think some of the chatter is, yeah, Jim Ferry could get a job somewhere else. Maybe not, probably not a power five school, but I think he deserves to be a head coach somewhere else. And I, I think he will be. Um, for, for Pat Chambers, obviously how all that went down. Um, I talked, we, we talked about it a little bit too, but I mean, that's like the biggest reason guys are transferring, I think, along with just their whole coaching staff being gone. But after all that went down with Chambers, like, the players at their media day were not shy about how they felt. Like Miles Dredd said, like, we're not satisfied. We have no answers. Um, Jamari Wheeler really defended him and said the team was not happy with, you know, the fact that Chambers is, he was effectively fired. I know he was asked to resign, but that's, he was basically, you know, asked to leave. Um, and nobody was satisfied with that. So I think even at the beginning of the year, I, a lot of guys were, you know, frustrated with, frustrated with the university and the program. Um, yeah, in terms of, of getting a job, one of the biggest rumors for Chambers right now is Fordham. Um, Fordham uh, does not <laughs> had a bad year last year, and they've had a lot of bad years before that. So, um, you know, they kind of need a, a recharge into the program, I guess you could say. Um, coming off of a year without basketball for Pat Chambers, I'm sure he's excited to get back into, into the game, into coaching. Um, so I could see that a, a few reports have said he's like the top three guy to get the job. Um, you know, he's the one or two guy that they're interviewing right now. Um, you know, some people have said it could be like controversial or whatever because of the past. Um, but I think he, I think he would be a, str a strong fit there over in the A10, um, over, over in the Bronx with Fordham. So we, we could see that happening, but, uh, overall that I'd expect both of them to be head coaches at other programs. Definitely this upcoming year. Awesome. Well, Coach Pegs, thank you once again for joining us uh, for some hoops talk. Um, I know all three of us want to get back to watching some March Madness, but I feel like we had a nice, nice little chat, nice little debrief about uh, the chaos that has unfolded around this program uh, over the past few, over the past week. Um, but definitely it's refreshing uh, to hear that it is not, in fact, the end of the world of Penn State basketball, that they will still have a team and things will continue to proceed. So, Thanks again, Will, for joining us. Definitely. Thank you guys for having me. It was good to see you. Uh, enjoy watching more March Madness. Have a good weekend. See you guys. All right. That was our good friend, Will Pegler, joining us to chat about Penn State basketball and the current state of the program with the new coach and a, you know, a little bit of player movement. So um, if you're a Penn State basketball fan, do not panic. Brighter days are ahead with Micah Shrewsbury. So thank you again for Will for joining us and chatting a little bit. Yeah, guys, and enjoy March Madness. You know, you can sit back, relax, knowing that Penn State is in capable hands. You can watch some other basketball and uh, still relish in the fact that Ohio State lost to Oral Roberts. Moorhead State. Um, yeah, you know, it's been another episode of Podward State. My name is Samuel Brungo. I'm Matt Paolesi. 